Hello guys and welcome back to Logic Pro X Tutorials. Uh, on this video I'd like to talk about the recording guitar. Um, I'm going to choose an empty project from my template window. And as you guys already know, there's this pop-up window where I choose my what type of tracks I want. So I'm going to choose guitar or bass um, because Logic will um, add some channel stripping to my, to my tracks. I'm going to choose one track uh, open library and um, create. Okay, uh, just the size. So, first things first, in order to record your guitar to your computer, you need an external audio interface. This is very important. You could connect your guitar with a normal jack and an adapter to the mini jack, but it's not a good idea because um, you'll have latency problems and uh, other stuff. Uh, and it's not a dedicated uh, input anyway, so you'll need um, an audio interface. There's a lot of options on the market. You have uh, very cheap ones. You could use even iRig uh, from Aiki Multimedia. Um, it works. It works with at least it works with GarageBand. Uh, but there's some options also from um, M Audio and um, other brands, uh, cheap brands, cheaper brands. I mean. Uh, I've got this uh, M Audio right now Mobile Pre, but there's a Audio Fast Track um, around. Uh, I can't tell you really now the price, but I'll ship. Uh, Behringer also makes uh, some interesting things, Al Alessis. So um, you really need to have this kind of stuff so you can record your guitar properly, uh, or even if you want to record your mic, your amp. In this case, I would choose an audio track uh, with no channel strip. With nothing, so I could record my my guitar with a with a microphone. So for that, you need a sound card where you can connect the microphone. Also important, if the sound card has phantom power, it's better because uh, you can use condenser microphones and they have great sound uh, to your uh, so you can record your guitar with different sounds other than a SM57. So, but right now I'm connected my Gibson Les Paul traditional. Uh, into into th this mobile pre has two inputs. Uh, you can only use in this case two inputs at the same time, uh, which is more than enough if you have your own studio. <laughs> okay, one of the things it's very important for you before recording the guitar is see if it's in tune. So if I go here to my channel strip, a spectra window. Uh, sometimes Logic has uh, some kind of um, digital uh, tuner, right now there's none here, so just a noise gate, pedal board, amp, channel EQ, and compressor, and a tape delay, which is off. So if you click here, I'm gonna add a tuner. Okay, and now I can check if my guitar is in tune. <laughs> Okay, this is a very sensitive tuner, if you guys could notice, but uh, as long as it's here on zero, it's going to be okay. So my guitar is now on tune, in tune. So I'm going to close the inspector, the library window. No, the inspector window. I'm going to choose another sound. Let me just double in delay. <laughs> Let's stay with this bright and clean. Okay, um, if I go to my inspector window, I can see what kind of uh, stuff logic add to my uh, signal chain. So I've got here a noise gate, which is important if you have a, a guitar with lots of distortions. And next I've got my pedal board. In order to see you click here, in order to change here, and in order to disengage here. So you see it. Logic has put two pedals, they're both disengaged. Let's see. Some overdrive, some compression. <laughs> Okay, they're both disengaged. There's the amp. Okay. I'll take some of the bass here. And there's the usual stuff here, like reverb and uh, tremolo. You can sync to your project. Presence master, the usual uh, controls found on a re real amp. Of course, you can choose your amp anytime. Um, you model, you can choose your amp and you can choose your uh, cabinet. 
also you can choose very important your microphone and place it around like this okay so everything is ready to record also had here some EQ uh, some compression and um, don't forget this uh, th this channel strip is uh, something already logic put for you so you can uh, take off all the effects and leave just the amp and then uh, add a compressor after or the channel EQ after uh, or, ch or change the settings to your taste the tape delay it says engage I'm going to engage to see what it sounds like okay it's like a slap echo I prefer to add this effect to all fill your tracks um, like I said in, a, in the previous video because you have more control of your sound uh, if you record a lot of guitars so uh, one thing I want to make sure is also my metronome is on so if you click here uh, it doesn't fit all the window because it's a 13 inch screen click and click okay there's also the tempo I'm gonna double click and enter manually my tempo I'm gonna say I want to record about 100 BPMs okay I'm gonna increase the size of the window all right and now just press R on your keyboard and ready to record let's check out <laughs> Okay, so this is was my first take, and now you, do, you have a lot of options here. You can duplicate the track with exact same settings on this uh, icon here. New track with duplicate settings, or you can re-record. And this is an important thing uh, when recording guitars. If you're double tracking, and double tracking works like this. I'm going to record the same thing. First, I'm going to duplicate the track with exact same settings. Uh, one thing I want to change here for the purpose of a different sound is my going to my amp and I'm going to change the microphone to a 57 and put it here it gives me a slightly different sound okay so right now um, I'm going to mute this channel rewind you can rewind with your keyboard and uh, start recording the same thing exactly the same thing or try to do my best at least Press R. Okay, that was close enough. So right now I have two tracks with the exact same with the exact same chords progression chords I mean this is what G, G major and a C uh, what I have here is important because uh, when you're double tracking this is going to make your sound huge because there's this old technique where it comes to, to your mixer and uh, I'm going to pan hard both guitars one to the left side to the right uh, and let's check out all these sounds let me just disengage the click for now Okay, sounds very cool. One thing to notice is once the click starts and um, you've noticed there's some uh, bars w before starting recording, uh, you better wait one bar here because Logic will cut the first initial chord attack. So uh, let's see if it has here something interesting. Okay, here, here it is. Or you do this later. You move this. So in order to hear the first initial Transient. Okay, so this is the way you record your guitar. You can keep adding tracks if you want to make a little solo over this. So I'm going to add another track, in this case uh, with different settings. So I'm going ahead and um, new track, guitar bass. I'm going to choose my input right now, so I don't have problems with my microphone. I'm going to put input monitoring and record enable, create. 
Mm. And I'm gonna choose uh, some distorted guitar for the solo. I don't know, something here. <coughs> no, this is a lot of distortion. Maybe a crunch guitar is better. <coughs> Okay, it could be this one. I'm gonna close the inspector. Uh, I mean the library and also the inspector. And um, it's ready to rock. So press record and start making your solo. <laughs> Okay, really cool sound. Let's listen back. Disable the metronome right now. So this is where it goes, really simple to record your guitar. Uh, don't forget everything I mentioned before about the interface and dedicated input on the interface. So um, if you have any question, feel free to leave a comment. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. Uh, cheers.